Well, yeah, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. We're actually recording this on Thanksgiving Day. What do you have planned for Thanksgiving there, uh, Zach? Uh, I don't know the time we're eating here, and then I gotta go to my aunt's, and it's like, it's gonna be a whole fucking thing. Like, that's why we are recording at 10 a.m. Pacific. <laughs> well, it's one for me, so, you know, it's about time I got, you know, started with my, uh, Thanksgiving. I, I, I don't know, what's your favorite thing on Thanksgiving? What's your favorite thing to eat? Uh, I don't know, ham, maybe? Ham? Like, out of everything, ham? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm not a big turkey person. Um, and I like salty more than savory. What about like sides and stuff? Uh, like sides? Uh, I mean, my shit is fine. It's not my. I'm just there, so I don't have to make any food. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's that's a that's a lot of what? That's a lot that you're putting on there. What are you talking about? a lot of dairy this is the best part my favorite thing is um, i don't know maybe green bean casserole with the fr the french onions on top mm -hmm. yeah i mean that's good yeah i don't really have a huge preference either way are you Yeah, it's like, I'm too busy, like, prepping for that exam that I have to take next week that I can't, like, even, not really enjoying anything right now. Yeah, you're telling me about that. <laughs> so, I, as you can guess, you know what Chris's favorite part actually is yeah, of it, Thanksgiving. <laughs> it's, uh... Seeing my family, I really enjoy, you know, getting together, spending time with the people that you love. <laughs> I know. Yeah, that's why. You, that's why you didn't go two weeks ago, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's exactly why. You're well, like that's why I locked this the door upstairs. <laughs> I mean, she had plenty of people there. She didn't need me. I would just came, you know, eat the food and left. You know, pretty much what I do at Thanksgiving, too. Have, have you gotten any of the pie? Or are you just eating the whipped cream? No, I'm getting some pie, too. See, there, here's a piece of crust. <laughs> mm. You guys think I could finish it? I, I thought you were gonna finish it in the time it. Oh, I mean, I the know. time it takes for us to finish this podcast. Yeah, I don't know. Well, <laughs> you gotta talk. Well, time to jump into your movies, Chris. You gotta, you gotta talk with your mouth full. Um. So you know the SAG strike's finally over. Thank God. Maybe we'll get some fucking decent movies, because I was trying to go see Thanks Killing the other day. Well, first of all, the movie theater was like. Smelly. I don't know what was going on. But I was like, "Woo!" <laughs> you could smell it, man. It was bad. And so we had to leave. It wasn't your upper lip. No, no, definitely. Uh, I, like, yeah, I don't, I don't smell anything on my upper lip. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I've been watching a lot of movies at home. And that means like getting caught up on things that I've either seen before or. <laughs> I, I just want you guys to know I'm already incredibly grossed out. <laughs> I'm already having like a visceral reaction to this. <laughs> Like the all the I, I think if you don't like I think if you don't look at yourself it's better. Yeah, right? If I just like I'll just play with it more. <laughs> yeah, so I've been catching up with like some older movies. I rewatched both the Ace Ventura movies. What 
surprisingly, held up incredibly well. Like, okay, the first one, the whole plot with the transsexual woman being, you know, mentally ill and all this kind of stuff, that did not age well. But the comedy, and you know what actually did age really well, was the style. The way that Ace Ventura dresses is the way that hipsters dress now. It's really funny. And then you look around, and it's like Courtney Cox. And it's like she dresses like a like a cottagecore lesbian. And you're just like, this is... Like, this Was this a queer movie before, like, queer culture existed? <laughs> And then the second one, which I didn't even realize, was directed you, by Steve. You mean the best one? Oh yeah, dude, so much better. I watched the second one. <laughs> there was a joke every five minutes in that mm -hmm. that fucking movie. And there's and they're they're funny too. I feel like there were so many drugs involved in the making of that movie from like just like either psychedelic creativity or you know, cocaine fueled creativity. But like you have one set piece after it next with that. It's like they're on the mountain with the with the um, the helicopter, and then like they're going down a waterfall, and then there's the consulate, and then they have like the actual good representation, which I would assume anyway, of the African tribes that are there. And yeah, you have to. Have uh, I bet it is not. I bet it is very not. I'm interested. I would love to see it, like a documentary about the making of that because it, there's like it looks like they had to have used extras because it was it had to have been shot on. I don't know. Maybe it wasn't shot on site. Maybe I'm just like wanting it to be better because it's one of my favorite movies but well and it's there's oh. so much physical humor mm -hmm. in the second one yeah like like reminiscent of like you know all the chris farley movies too like around the time period mm -hmm. and it's like it's they don't really do that now <laughs> And so, like, it feels like low-hanging fruit, but it's still funny. Yeah, it, it does feel like very low-hanging fruit, but it it's, um, what's the word? It feels like I'm watching a cartoon. Like, it's very cartoony, like, very slapstick humor. Like, you know. Oh, God. But, yeah, speaking of things that didn't age well, because, you know, let's talk about the scary movies. <laughs> oh, I just wanted to mention that the second one was directed by Steve Odenkirk. He's the same guy who did Kung Pao, which I'm like... Oh, I kind of get, like, my entire, like, strain of comedy now. Like, I know why I think that way. Is he related to Bob Odenkirk? Mm-hmm. They're brothers. <laughs> um, they're wacky and they're... No, I'm not going to say what I was going to say. <laughs> Whew. <laughs> Scary movie did not age well. The jokes, racist, mm -hmm. sexist, <laughs> homophobic, like everything so, about that. That's the exact opposite of what Ace Ventura was like. <laughs> and I watched the first three and they progressively get stupider and worse. The second one is probably the better one just because it has the most memes, you know, like, <laughs> my germs. My germs. <laughs> yeah. Actually, put my hand in a pot. It was like it was planned. I couldn't have planned that one better. <laughs> You're like, is there anything you didn't make yourself? Oh, I ordered this pie. <laughs> You're like, oh, oh yeah. I love pie. <laughs> <laughs> is uh, the third one the one with Charlie Sheen in it? Yeah, that one's one of the worst ones. Cause like they do an eight mile parody. And so, you know, like, the material they're going to use in the Eight Mile Pure parody, not good, not good at all. Um, so it's, I mean, I think it's really hard to keep doing like sequels. I mean, how many scary movies have there been? Like now, at least five, four or five. I know four. We were going to do four, but I was like, I haven't seen four, and I didn't want to give it like the chance because after three, you're like, oh yeah, I don't know if I want to keep going with this. Oh, well, there is only five. Oh God! <laughs> Make a shot. I, I, you agreed to this. You said that pumpkin pie was your favorite thing, and you just want everybody to know how committed you are to physical comedy after watching Ace Ventura one and two. You know, 
when I signed the contract, you know, the actor's contract that we have for... After the SAG strike was over? <laughs> yeah, you know, because our company isn't immune to that kind of stuff right? <laughs> over here at the last save point. Um, I didn't read that deep into the clause, and I didn't see the part where I had to eat a whole pumpkin pie on Thanksgiving on camera. Yeah, just wait until, you know, Christmas where Chris will eat a whole fruit cake. <laughs> no, this is not going to be an ongoing thing. <laughs> I refuse after that. <laughs> See, Chris, while the strike was on, everybody, Chris refused to do physical bits, but it's really what he's passionate about. It's true. I mean, if you go back and look... That's why he... <laughs> I That's why he eats all that Halloween candy on Halloween. Oh. He, ate a whole, he ate a whole bag of candy corn because he's a sadist. Uh, I feel sick already. I've had like five bites of like, I don't know, handfuls. I don't it's know. too much dairy. It's too much dairy. <sighs> you put way too much cream on <laughs> And should I just go like face first into it? Should I do a face first bite? I, I, I don't I don't know, man. You got then you have to like wipe your face off. I'm gonna do it. Here we go. This is for you, Ace Ventura. Ah, <gasps> uh, uh, it's God, in your hair. Oh, what have I done? I can't even. Oh, see. you got it on your headphones, you idiot. Ah. <laughs> uh, uh, Well, while Chris is sorting out his life over there in white face, I'll talk about uh, the TV I've been watching. So uh, Chris made me watch the first episode of Scott Pilgrim, and my sort of thoughts are it's it's OK. I, I just think it's like I've seen all of this before. Like I've seen the movie like multiple times and watching it happen like animated like they've changed some things from what i remember like the pacing is a little bit different I'm gonna so throw up. <laughs> well don't we can't show that i can't hear you because the headphones are covered in pie so uh yeah it, like we watched the first episode i thought about watching the second one i watched it last night um the show's only been out for like a week i think um so it's been it, it's okay I don't know if I'll finish it. Like, it'll be like one of those shows that maybe I watch like one episode at a time, even though it's all out right now. Um, I think it's really interesting that they got all the original VO. Um, my voice, the uh, VA, sorry, VA. So that's been really good. Um, what else have I been watching? I've like watched like three or two or three episodes of Loki. It's every time I want to watch it, it's it like my. ADHD stops me from doing it because I want to be like doing something else. But when that's when you're watching that show, you have to be paying attention to everything. Like there's so much going on and it's like looks very pretty. And but I'm like, then Owen Wilson comes on and you're just like, oh, you're talking about Loki. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Same thing. There's too much going on. It's incredibly chaotic. Man. I mean, I know it's supposed to be, but like, <laughs> like, why did we pick Owen Wilson? <laughs> why? Wow. <laughs> He's so strange watching him in the thing. And it's like Tom Hiddleston's like this very serious actor. And then we got Lightning McQueen over here. <laughs> Man, that made me want some more pie. What about you? What have you been watching? I went over both shows I watched. You went over Scott Pilgrim, right? Yeah, I was talking about that while you were mm. sorting your shit out. <laughs> um, Scott Pilgrim, I don't know if we have the same opinion on it, but I don't know. It's weird. It feels just like an indie male power fantasy. It's like I'm so tired. Oh, it's, 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 it's super incel -y. 
It's incredibly incelly, and it's like Ugh. any pixie dream girl trope is happening. I wrote down some things, and it was like the VOs are good. That was like my one thing, and the art style's fun. But it's like needlessly meta. It's uh, I don't know why we have it so like it's so Japanese coded, but then it's from Canada, and it's like I don't know. It was very. It's just very weird show. It's not for me, obviously, but yeah, just not my thing. And apparently, like, oh, the character grows, and it's like, well. Well, the, at this point, the movie came out 13 years ago, right. and it's uh, the, they kept it the same. I feel like it feels the same as when you're watching like the scary movies or Ace Ventura. Like sometimes it doesn't feel appropriate mm -hmm. at all. Yeah, I completely um, agree. I mean, I've been watching some other shows though. I've been watching, um, um, like kind of like. Hmm. I'm watching the show Scavengers Range. Uh, you you looked it up before we started, right? Yeah, I clicked through it a little bit, the trailer. Yeah, it looks good, right? It's an interesting art style with some creative mm, decisions, I guess you would say. But Yeah, that was that was my main complaint. I didn't really? like how it looked. Yeah, that's why. It's definitely not like I can't do this. I can't do any more pie. <laughs> I'm like trying to keep the bit going, but I, I honestly, I'm gonna throw up if I have any more of this pie. Well, you see, audience, Chris doesn't care enough about you. Push through the pain. I mean, you're already committed. Like the thing is, like I would just finish it. I can't, like, like the consequences are gonna happen no matter what. Like there's so much of like, look, hang on, look. I'm gonna do a scoop. There's so much pie left. Like it's ridiculous how much pie is left in this thing. Well, maybe if he didn't put, you know, two pounds of fucking That's whipped the cream on the top. Part. The whipped cream's the best part! <laughs> I... <coughs> I can't wait that, like, now your headphones are going to be, like, super sticky. <laughs> Of money we do stuff like this is replace headphones. <laughs> no, you just you put, probably have to replace the ear pads. <laughs> yeah, I, well, I just replaced them too. That's a funny thing. Yeah, scavenger drains all right. It got boring. The storyline couldn't keep up with the art style. Uh, but I've been watching a couple other shows uh, Rick and Morty and Planet Earth 3. Exactly what you expect from both of those shows. Rick and Morty has the new voice actors, but you can't even tell, which I was like, oh, cool. And then it's just the same kind of trite stuff. Uh, Planet Earth, though, is amazing. Exactly what you would expect. Beautiful spectacles. And then they guilt you really hard about uh, destroying the Earth at the end. And, you know. Then it's David Attenborough. Is it David Attenborough it or David Morgan Freeman? Yeah, it is. And it's it's he's so old. He does the, the thing at the end. And you're like, oh, no, like he doesn't have a lot more of these in him. But it's the ultimate. It's the best for sleeping. You know, you fall asleep to his silky soft voice. It's wonderful. Chris, he's 97 <laughs> years old. Oh, wow. He's going to be an octogenarian for sure. I think he'll hit 100. He's too active not to. He's still like going he's out seen, and shit. He's seen so many wars, dude. Like he's been yeah. alive for so many wars. <laughs> I know, right? It's going to be crazy. But you know, with AI, they're going to keep using him, I think. Because I think they'll do narrations with him. I, I, I'm going to call it now and say after he dies, there's going to be a controversy and then they're going to do an AI voice documentary with him. He's the only one of his siblings left alive. Oh, stop saying sad stuff. It's Thanksgiving. <laughs> No, you keep perspective. You have to, you know, appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, go upstairs. Go say hi to your... Get, go out of the basement. Come out of the basement. Go say hi to your family right now. Just, just go do it. If you're watching the podcast, <laughs> instead of being with your family, go say hello to your family. Or don't. 
Or don't. Be yeah. like Chris. Yeah, be like me. And eat an entire eat fucking it. pie. Oh, he said he was going to eat the entire thing, you guys. He said it. I'm starting again. Here I go. <laughs> it's terrible. I look, I'm like having a reaction. I don't know if I'm going to be able to eat pumpkin pie again after this. Like, it's like visceral to me now. Like, it's hitting my mouth and like making me like, uh, well. Did you wash your hands first? Uh, before I started. Before you started setting up or before you started eating the pie? I I didn't even shower yet today. <laughs> I thought maybe I'd, that's why it tastes bad. <laughs> I thought it'd be your own for me filth to do it after I, you know, ate the pie because I was going to be all messy. All right. Anyway, yeah, Invincible is the other show I'm watching. This is the only one I feel like has any worth talking about. And Gen V, they're both actually produced by uh, Seth Rogen, which is an interesting tidbit. And Seth Rogen does some voice acting in Invincible. Um, Invincible is the better show out of the two, in my opinion. Gen V had a lot of pandering. I already talked a little bit about this. Um, but in the end, it goes, you know, it ties back into the um, the, uh, the the boys storyline, which is what I was expecting and what I wanted. But then it ends as soon as it ties back in. And you're like, well, fine. I guess. And then, um, uh, is the other show good? The, the, uh, no, no, the, the other one, the one about the chick, uh, the boys or which one, which one? No, isn't that? there like a third show? There is. Yeah. Um, Let's see. Yeah, I don't know if, uh, I haven't seen it. If that's the case. Okay. I type in shows and then I, I spelled invincible wrong. <laughs> Oh, you mean the invi oh about the girl? Yeah, I don't know. I didn't watch that one. Wow. <laughs> yeah, because it had a female lead. Why? Why am I not surprised? <laughs> oh, it's called Adam Eve. Ah, yeah. No, I didn't watch that one. Um, I mean, there's like a huge gap in between Invincible seasons. <laughs> I don't know. I Stephen Yun is Mark Grayson. Yeah. <laughs> It's a good show. I mean, I, I actually think Invincible is decent. It it has some decent... Like, I feel like it does the Superman trope and throws it on its uh, head, which is kind of, like, the coolest thing about it. Um, and I also like... But is there like, substance there other than that? Like, I... A little bit. I like, don't need to see... Like, I, I think watching the I'm gonna grow into a superhero thing happen again. Like... In, in, in the in the expanded version, given, how, like, how much anime we watch, yeah. I'm kind of just, like... You're like, I've seen this how many times? And you're like, oh, it's got violence in it. And then it feels like, oh, it's like Attack on Titan. <laughs> right? This is this is baby's first uh, violent show. Well, it's definitely like, you like, can tell that both of the shows are for like teenagers. It's, I think it's like one of the most violent. Um, what's it called? Superhero shows on the air. Like if you want to compare it to the boys and stuff like that. Well, it's the same producer, so it would be. But I think that's kind of what sets it apart is it's like feels more serious than some of the other um, superhero stuff that's out, which is like, if you want to talk about getting surface, like levels amount of that kind of superhero development, you watch a superhero movie because they're going to do it again and again and only have a two hour time frame to do it. So you're kind of getting like that expanded growth, but you're also getting like the trope where it's like, I don't want to walk in my father's footsteps. So he has to be a superhero, but at the same time, distance himself from what his father has done. So, I don't know, I think it's a nice juxtaposition of, like, ideals and things that are going on in the actual story. Um, it's enough to keep me watching it. It's enough to see, like, I, I need to know how Mark Grayson is either going to reconcile with his father and the Viltrumite uh, race, or how he's going to defeat them. Because either one is going to be one hell of a daunting task. Like, I want to know how they're going to write themselves out of it. That's what I'm more curious about. <laughs> Yeah, I've only watched like a few episodes, so it's like not a huge thing for me. <laughs> Can anybody else tell that I woke up like less than two hours ago? <laughs> not hearing a lot of pie eating over there. I'm going into a diabetic coma. I'm sorry. <laughs> I had to focus. Well, for, did like, you get your years. insulin? Yeah, I had to focus on for like two seconds on actually talking. Like, 
the sugar and dairy rushing from my brain. Oh my god, I took another bite. I feel so sick. Oh, I can't. Well, let's move on to games, everybody. <laughs> Please. While Chris dies mind. over there. <laughs> so I know that both of us have been playing like a ton of backpack battles as like our I'm gonna play a game for 20 minutes. Like I I know that what happened was I I think I saw it on the demo thing or I heard it on drop frames. Like one of those two things happened and I downloaded it and I'm like, oh man, this is like super addicting <laughs> because it's like That's it's 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 got like the card stuff. I don't mean like the actual cards in the game, but like, you know, like the deck building kind of stuff and the strategy. And it's just like it's so addicting. And then the fact that you're like not really playing against people you're playing, it's like auto generated stuff. I mean, it could be people real stuff, but I mean, you're not playing somebody like you're not actual matchmaking. Right. So I think it, it, it gets away from that, like the frustration you like feel when you lose, like when you're playing magic, mm -hmm. right? When you're playing magic online. And they've been updating it so much in the last month that we've been playing it. And the game's not even scheduled to release until like 2024. I think it says April 2024. Well, they're definitely like and, testing it right now. They're t trying to see what works with the two characters that they have, but that's all they're really doing right now. Yeah, I think they need to add more items, but the more items you add, the like you, you end up having to add more slots. So basically, you know, if you guys haven't played the game, it feels a lot like um, it's, I mean, it's an auto battler, right? But instead of you moving your items across the field, you're, you're building this backpack, right? And everything sort of links together the same way, like in a TFT, like, you know, you get different synergies together and it's all about building the best thing you can to like use all your resources. We have very different um, strategies for this. I just try to make sure everything, you know, lights up and links up and And I just win. But now we're getting to the point where like, that's like early game stuff and you need to be able to transition mm -hmm. and, and coming harder if you don't plan that way. Um, I think I'm diamond in both and ranked right now. I, I mean, I think I'm, I'm either diamond in both or diamond and platinum. And, you know, you can tell that when you're in like gold, you're like just fucking waffle stomping people. And then once you get to like platinum and diamond, you start. I mean, I started to feel like there's a lot more strategy involved and people are like specifically going for builds. But I'm just trying to. transition as you go through i th i think that what they'll end up doing is adding a lot more um upgrades i i think it makes the most sense in order to sort of cleave um a better state forward for the games uh, I, i'm interested in what the other characters are going to do because there's obviously going to be a melee class and there's probably going to be like a real spellcaster So, I mean, it's free right now, you guys. The demos out there is free. Like, it's good too. It's put super it, addicting. Put 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 it on your your wish list. Download the demo. Give it a little bit of time. I'm pretty sure, like, you're gonna love it. Um, I think that if they put the game on the phone, we'd all be dead. <laughs> like, I would just be laying in bed playing this game. <laughs> I've played about an hour of Super Mario RPG that came out last week. I was gonna. I've had that. it since Friday. It's a little too expensive, though. Oh, it's definitely too expensive for what it is. <laughs> yeah. Like I thought, there was gonna be more to it. There's still no voice acting. It's definitely like it's HD and stuff, but like, I think it suffers from. the you know 
the intro of an RPG where everything's like everything's baby mode. And it's like, I'm can I skip the tutorial part? Because I played an RPG before and the mechanics that they're doing, like it seems so repetitive. Like, I don't even know if I'm going to go back to it. Like, I, I have my switch like set up in my room to play when I'm in bed. And all I've been playing on it is the watermelon game and then that. <laughs> That's so funny. I mean, I haven't been gaming a lot either. Both of, I think both of our, like, Novembers ended up being pretty busy with other stuff between school and I got super sick for a while. Um, but, uh, yeah, Chris was getting like, down with the sickness. Yeah, and then, you know, Zach having his test and everything like that. So, I mean, I really didn't get a lot of time to play games either. Like, with everything that came out, I wanted to buy more too, but I've only really been playing the Cyberpunk DLC. But I've been playing it a lot. Like I've been, I actually replayed through the entire part of the other game too. Like I, um, I, I got to level 60. I did every single side mission, every mission I could until Dogtown without completing the game. And now I'm in Dogtown doing the missions. And you know what? I had that like, you know, Zach, do you ever have moments of just like extreme realization? Mean, you mean an epiphany? You know, you know, maybe where just like reality feels super real, or like the task that you're doing like seems less like natural. Like I was like I was driving the cars the other day in uh, Cyberpunk, and I was just like driving a car to another place, and I was like, I'm just pushing an arrow and moving like polygons across the screen and the Wait, light. You mean what am I doing with my life? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you know, you ever get that feeling like the what am I doing with my life feeling, Zach? I think at the end of, uh, you know, at the end of every recording, I'm just like, oh, you know, you get like 45 minutes in, and you're like, I don't know if I'm really doing anything right now. You're like, I just want to go lay down instead. Yeah, I feel it. So is it, a, is it a yes or a no on the Cyberpunk DLC? I mean, it's been out for two months, but... If you want to play Cyberpunk again, Cyberpunk's a good enough game. Or even if the DLC now. doesn't come out... What? Now. It's a good enough game now. Yeah, well now, if the DLC hadn't come out, you could have had plenty of fun just playing with the uh, the stat rebuilds that they did. That's what yeah, because like 2.0 came out like the month, I think the month before mm -hmm. or like right before the DLC. Yep. And that added like so much different stuff that like I started to play it again. And I was just like, oh, my God, that's a lot of stuff. <laughs> Otherwise, what have we been playing? We've been playing, I mean, we haven't been playing much BG3 like in the last week or so, but we've been like hammer throwing it, yeah. hammer, hammering through it. And the thing is, like, we basically stopped recording it because there's too much pressure to end at a certain point, And I think it stops us from playing as much as we want to. Yeah, and it's so, not only that, like, we have to kind of be on when we're playing too, you know, to like put on a performance. So it's like, it's like, God, I just want to like smoke weed and not think when I get off work and play a little Baller's Gate and recording it just makes it too much. Yeah, so I mean, right now we just got to Baldur's Gate, like I would say within the last like two or three streams, or two or three sessions. Mm -hmm. And I don't know about you, but I feel like there's less at risk now. Oh, for sure. We're way so, we're super strong. That's why. Like we're like one rounding enemies and stuff. And it's we one like, this is what I didn't want to happen at the end. I like, we shouldn't do all this stuff. I don't want to be over leveled when we get to the last <laughs> act. And I think we're either level 10 or 11 out of 12. And we didn't even like go back to the mountain pass too. That's the crazy thing is we, just kept on we we're like yeah we don't need to do that right but we still have that like incessant need to discover every mission and like every inch of the map and like finish every quest yeah talk to every person 
So I don't think we're going to get done with the game soon. I know other people are like, well, it's like 100 hours. And I'm like, hang on, I'm going to look. I'm going to look because I know how much I had before we started playing. Uh, Baldur's Gate 3. Chris and I have put about 100 hours into it already. Sounds about right. And we're just barely getting to Baldur's Gate. Yeah. So there's, I know that each subsequent area feels bigger and bigger. And when we got to Baldur's Gate, we're like, oh God, there's so much. Like it's it's almost like a deterrent from playing it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I feel like it's, it's kind of why I'm like, I'm not really like, hey, let's play Baldur's Gate. I was like, oh man, what are we gonna have to do? Uh, Can we end this? Can we just be done? No, I still have two more, two more games to talk about. <laughs> Hurry up. You're the one who's making it worse for yourself over there. <laughs> I got back into Final Fantasy 16. I, I had only played it like two times in the last um, two months. Um, just between concerts, I had COVID, and like it was a lot. So and he won't. I've been like hammer throwing it right now. And he won't shut up about the icon fight that he just did. <laughs> I did the last icon fight three times. <laughs> did it once, and I was like, oh my god, this is amazing. And then I was like watching the recording and I'm like, a lot of pixels in there, a lot of, a lot of things happening. And I was like, well, I'll increase the bit rate for the recording. Cause I know what, wait, for those of you who don't know, Chris, Chris restreams the recording for all of us. I mean, I watch it locally, but uh, Nick sees that version. And so like with all of it getting processed multiple times, it looks worse. So we've upped the bit rate and I was just like, Looks so good now. It looks closer to what like I'm actually playing, um, but it's been last. The last little section was just so crazy. Like I'm not even just talking about the icon fight. Like the the story things that are happening now is so ridiculous. And I just started. The, I played, I think, an hour after the last icon fight, and I'm like, where? What are we gonna be doing? Like they've. <laughs> They've alluded to the airship stuff that still hasn't happened. I feel so powerful. <laughs> and it's like learning to use like these new icon abilities. Like, I know that the the VO for Asterion is winning uh, all the, the awards, <laughs> right? All, all the awards this year. Right. But like, after watching this section with Clive, like the voice actor for Clive doing this stuff, I'm just like it's so dramatic and it's such a different take because Baldur's Gate is not light but like the way it's the the VA plays Asterion is so different mm -hmm. and like they're both English so it's like it's weird but I think if we go for a serious role I think that Clive's the the voice actor for Clive It'd does like such best, a great job you went best drama instead of like <laughs> you know Best action. Like, like I can understand Asterion wearing like best VA, right? Mm -hmm. But best dramatic, I would definitely say it's probably Clive. But that's like especially way, after right? what happened the last one. Like he exists in a, a story where he gets to make those, you know, um, acting uh, decisions, essentially, his voice acting decisions, or he gets the opportunity to do them. And if I if I remember correctly, I think him and some of the other VAs are doing a D&D podcast or something like that. Hmm. So like, I'm just, I'm sort of, there are sections in that game where I'm just like, what the fuck is going on? This is like, I'm doing these side quests or these hunts and I'm like, this is so boring. <laughs> and it'll be like three streams of like, this is so boring. And then it'll be like, oh shit, here's this icon fight. Oh my God. Just edging you, just like, just making sure that you get that denial before you get that, you know, big old- Well, it's like if you did, if, if you didn't do the side quest, I think that it would be nonstop. Like if you're just yeah. going from story to story thing, it'd be crazy. Hmm. So I'm re I, I'm like it. Like it's the game I'm playing right now. Um, and then the last game, I haven't even I haven't even put it in my 
PS5 yet. <laughs> like, I bought Persona Tactica, but I think it's making me be like, all right, I need to play Persona 5. Like, I need to finish it. I've tried to start it and finish it like three times. Why don't you just start doing your old playthroughs instead of starting over again? Because I don't remember what happened. <laughs> no! <laughs> so, like, I have to do the beginning part that I've done three times that I remember. But then the in-between parts, I don't. And I'm, like, following a guide at the same time to not miss anything. And so it kind of feels like you're on autopilot. And so, like, all you really have in it is, like, the story that's actually unfolding and the combat. And you don't really have the choice. So that's kind of what stops me. Because I have I have Persona. I bought this game four times. I bought Persona 5. I bought Persona 5 Royale. I bought Persona 5 One More Edition. And I just bought Persona 5 Royale on the PC. And I have Persona 5. Is it Strikers? I have Strikers, too. And I had it. I haven't played that because I'm like, I haven't finished five. So I think that after I finish FF16, that's probably what will our next thing will be. But that's going to be, you know, 100 hours of us. So I don't know if we'll actually be just putting that content. It. I'll just we'll do we can do some Persona Tactica on a separate day of, from the Final Fantasy stuff. No, I meant I meant I meant Persona 5. Oh, like. I mean, if that's what so, you want, we could do a long, long. Well, long... I mean, you, I mean, you leave a comment down below if you want to watch us play Persona Five with full voice acting. <laughs> yeah, we'll listen to the whole voice acting because the whole game is voice acting. But yeah, it's been kind of a it's been a crazy month. I know that Steam sales going on right now. I know we picked up some games, but you know, we're gonna put Chris out of his misery. You gonna you gonna give him something before it's over? Uh, like one last hurrah or something? Yeah, all right, here we go. Yeah, take your headphones off this time. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Bye, everybody. All right, we're done. All right, go take a shower. Said, I hope this is the video that makes us go viral. I hope so too. The amount of work that I just put into that. Oh god, Zach, I feel so fucking sick. You have no idea.